lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Robinson.
just can't lose Who burn a kale More than a conqueror Jesus in you You are a winner You are born to win Who burn a kale More than a conqueror Power with Yes, yes, yes. You are a winner. You are a winner. You better learn how to believe it because you are a winner. You know why? Because the Lord made you a winner. This is Apostle Urban Whitlow, and I'm standing in tonight for Apostle Vincent L. Smith, and you are listening to The Voice. Amen. A time of great talk concerning 
I'm, I'm almost certain that Apostle Smith will not be in tonight, so we're standing in for him in Jesus' name. Amen. And I know I'm not here by myself because the producer of the show is here. I'm talking about the one, the only, the lovely Dr. Kimmy Robinson. Come on and say hello to us, woman of God. Hello, my brother. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice. And we also have my sister, Evangelist Henderson, out of Indy. How are you doing, my sister? Blessed. How are you? Happy to be here. This is the day the Lord has made. I made a choice. I would rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, you know what? Y'all gonna learn to so get guess, your own scriptures. So stuff. guess what? We we could double team him today, my sister. <laughs> he got no help. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, well, you know what? We are here, and you know what? There's a couple of things I want us to do. But Elder Henderson, if you would lead us in a word of prayer, we'll get started, and we'll just have a little talk for a little bit. And then we'll get out of here tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and praise you, O oh God, how you kept us all day long. You brought us to this moment, even right now, and we give you thanks and we give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, your loving kindness. We thank you, God, because you're just worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you glory and we give you honor. We thank you for this platform tonight, Father God, that we can discuss you, Father God, and have fellowship in you. Oh, God, we just give you the praise. Well, let something be said tonight that will encourage, that will uplift, that will deliver, that bring healing. Oh, God, we thank you right now for everything that you're doing. Everything that will be said will be for your glory and for your honor. Use us tonight. Oh, God, to be a blessing to somebody else. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. Well, we certainly are grateful to the Lord because guess what? He brought us to the very last Tuesday in the year of 2020. I think you would agree with me that this has been a trying year, a very turbulent year. For a lot of uh, people, it's been a very disturbing year. But the good news is that we are still here in spite of it all. Amen. Would you say that with me? Would you agree on that? Amen. Amen. You know, and every now and again, I look at certain things, notes, and things that I've taken over the years and, you know, things that I've learned throughout the year. And I think I just want to briefly kind of refresh what we have looked at or what we have seen through the year uh, for a few moments. I personally, and, I, I, and I'll allow you in a moment to, uh, 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 to share your thoughts on what I'm about to say, but I think that we have had a year that has really tested the faith of the believer. And I think that this is where we should understand uh, 1 Peter 4 and 12 that tells us, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial that is to try us as though some strange thing happened unto us. I don't know if you've ever seen that scripture or if you paid that scripture any attention But when I think about it, I think about how strange it is how we have been challenged above normal this year. We have gone through things this year that we probably haven't gone back any of, we haven't gone through any other year. So when the Bible says, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, would you think that this year has been a strange year with fiery trials? Or did it make sense to you that we went through the things we went through? I'll allow either one of you to answer, or both of you. I would say definitely this has been a trying year, 2020. Not only have we faced a pandemic, we also faced a pharaoh of of this United States who don't really care about people. And we also have leaders who are puppets to the president and it's just been a trying year to see so many people who have died, who are homeless, who are jobless, 
because we have a pharaoh who doesn't want to do the right thing, and we have a senate who doesn't care. And um, it's just been trying, but uh, we still know that God is in control. And you will reap what you sow because I really believe in the word. We may not see it, but, you know, how you treat others is going to come back to you. So I'm trying to teach my girls on a daily basis. How you treat others will come back to you. So that would be my input. Okay. Okay. Come on. Uh uh, uh, Elder Henderson, talk to me. What do you think? Amen. I, I totally agree with Dr. Kim and Kim, and it has been a trying year, year of turbulence in so many ways, and uh, the death and uh, of loved ones and different ones, you know, around us, so close to us as well. Uh, and, and just the, the changing, you know, of the guards and our government, so many things changing so fast, but it also has been a time that has called God's people uh, to draw closer to him. And, and I think that's a good thing that's come out of all of this is to, to recognize that our help is in the name of the Lord. And, and that, that keeps us focused because in the midst of everything that's going on, you know, God is still looking to be recognized and glorified in the midst. And, and I think it has called his people to, to, to focus in on that if God doesn't intervene, if God doesn't help us, you know, that we have no help. So I think also it brought people together as well as on the other side. It might have separated some, but I think that God is still getting the glory in the midst of this turbulent time. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at something even now. with and, and, again, let's think about this. Let's think about this, okay? This year to this date, in the USA, there are 19.4 million uh, COVID cases. There has been 336,000 deaths to this moment. Now, when you think about <clears throat> that many deaths, 336,000, what do you think to yourself? Do you think that's a small number? Do you think that's a big number? I think that's a big number when you consider um, the, the 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 when you consider the overall picture. I think it's a big number, uh, and to see it happening so fast, the number increasing so fast, and uh, and the polls, the the numbers that they have actually said are really not actually the real numbers. But just thinking of so many, uh, you know, that that make up that number, I think it's a large number. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, in the, the numbers, and you know what? In my estimation, any death is one death too many. But when yes. you consider tragedies, when you consider tragedies around the world because of a plane crash, a train derailing, uh, an accident on an expressway, or when you think of violence, when you think of uh, of cancer. Uh, victims or some other disease that causes people to die. None of them all together still matches this number for this year. So when I look at it, and you know, I live in the state of Georgia, so in the state of Georgia, when you drive up and down the expressway, you will often see how many roadside, how many roadway deaths there have been. So, you know, or based upon um, car accidents. But but nothing in my mind compares to looking at the numbers from this. And so I'm thinking there are people in their mindset who are saying uh, this cannot be the best that life has to offer. There are so many who are ready for 2020 to be over, but they, what they're not realizing is that we're going into 2021 with the same issue. Yes, there is a vaccine. The question is, is the vaccine even safe? Uh-oh. Is a vaccine safe? Are you going to do, I mean, because there are a lot of people taking vaccines, but let's, let's tell the truth. Has the vaccine been uh, tested on the different ethnicities, or has it been restricted to just one set of people? 
because, you know, different people, though we might all have the same blood, we don't all respond to the same thing the same way. Does, am I talking or does that not make any sense? Come on, we yes, have Dr. Kenny. Don't Okay, Dr. Amen, amen. And uh, what was the question? I'm so sorry. I was reading <laughs> your comments on on Facebook. I'm so sorry. <laughs> just help us, Father. We were talking about. Oh no, help me! We I'm saying, so sorry. Oh. People, people are so ready for 2020 to be over, and though we have a vaccine. For this pandemic, we're still going in to 2021 having this issue of this COVID-19 coronavirus. Here's the thing. They made a vaccine, but did they try it on different ethnicities or did they only try it on one group of people to see how it would work? Because though we are, uh, we have the same type of blood or whatever the case may be, we all react to things differently. Our bodies differently. So what what we're wondering is, just because we're going into 2021, does that make things better now because we have a vaccine? No. I want to tell you this. (laughs) I haven't made it yet. I'm still going day by day by day. Because I have learned that um, I'm not guaranteed tomorrow. I have seen so many people in my own eyes. You, you'd be like, wow, God called them home. Wow, God called that person home. So I am still doing second by second, hours by hours, days by days. However, if it's the will of God to allow me to make it to 2021, I'm not really going to really be in line for the first round of the vaccine. For one, I'm with you on this, uh, Apostle Irvin Whitlow. I want to see how it affects us. Secondly, even though there was a, a lead black scientist that produced the Perderma, I still want more information because back in the past, due to the Tuskegee um, experiment and others and how they sought out to really uh, produce genocide in the black communities with the vaccines, I'm really not comfortable with them right now. Um, so I will have to really do observe. So what I do, I make sure I take plenty of vitamin D, zinc, eat well, work out, stay in, um, wear my mask, and keep my hands washed and social distance because I am not feeling the vaccine. I would need to see how it works on other people. I know people say, trust God, but then God also gave, gives us common sense because our bodies are naturally built to kill off diseases. Man-made <laughs> uh, vaccines aren't. So I want to see what it, what it turns out to be. I'm not going to be in the line. However, there are some who are mandated to do so, so I pray that um, when they do take the vaccine that they are blessed and nothing happens to them. And finally, I really believe that 2021 will be great. However, we must go in 2021 like we have did with 2020, focusing on the Lord, because God is going to still reveal more information about his power and how mighty he is because um, even though we do have the vaccine and we have a new president, it's still not guaranteed that things will be better. Things can only guarantee to be better with the help of God. Amen. Say that, say that again. Things can only be better with what? With the help of God. Uh, somebody needs to know that. Because somebody thinks that it's going to be better just because we're getting another president. And it really has nothing to do with another president. Mm-mm. I mean, I do like his so, But it's not guaranteed. My guarantee is built on God's promises. What you say? Somebody needs to know that. Your guarantee is built upon God's promises. Come on, talk to me, yeah. Elder Henderson. Did you hear what she said? Amen, amen. I am in total agreement with that. You know, 
the song says, my hope is but nothing less, but, you know, Jesus promises. And, and you know, we, we have to keep our, our faith and our confidence in our, in our God. The scripture that came to me today was uh, in Hebrews 10, 35, and it says, cast out away that confidence that has such great recompense of reward. You know, we have to keep our confidence in the Lord and not throw it away, not put our confidence in a vaccine, not put our confidence in a president. You know, anybody in office, Bible tells us to, to not put our confidence in men, but to put our confidence in the Lord. You know, some trust in chariots and horses and their bank accounts and, you know, their status and their title, but we got to keep our trust in the Lord. And, and I truly believe that's what's going to be our deliverance is our confidence in the Lord because there is a great there is a great recompense, there is a great reward when we keep our confidence in him. But when we start putting our faith in people, we start putting our faith in the vaccine, we've moved away from the will of God because our hope and everything is established in that. Now, not to say that God can't use medicine, he can't use doctors, but he doesn't want our faith to be in those things. Our faith must stay stabilized in the Lord Jesus Christ. And God will give us the wisdom as we seek him. Lord, what is your will for me in this situation? Because what may be uh, his will for another person may not be his will for you. Uh, and so I think that we just have to trust God and be led by his spirit and all that we do in this upcoming year. And we will make it through and we'll have a victorious year because I believe God has great things and plans for his people in 2021. So, so let's think about this. Let's look at this scripture. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Do you think, I want the both of you to give me an answer on this. Do you think this whole pandemic has been strange That's my question. Personally, I don't think it's been strange. I think it's been, I think it's been unusual in that in the manner in, in which it kind of like, kind of came up after the new year. Although it had already been out there, but it hasn't really been in the media. You know, hadn't really been talked about. But it was always little veins of it coming up in in different news pieces that was being talked about in other mediums. Um, but not strange because you know the Bible says that that these things will come when we get close to the end of time. And I truly believe that these are all signs of the times in which we're living in because uh, in spite of everything that's going on, the reality of it is is that we are on the brink of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I do believe that we are in the end of the end of time. And the Bible in Matthew 24 lets us know some of those signs. And I just believe that we're living in those, in those times where we will see the various signs or the birthing pains of trouble and uh, havoc and uh, disappointment and, and, and all the things we see that's going on in the earth realm, you know, the earthquakes and, and the diseases and the pestilence, these things were prophesied and told us to look at when you see these things coming, get yourself together because the Lord is on his way back. And so I think it's not strange, not to the believers, it shouldn't be strange because it's in the word of God that these things will come to pass. Mm. Amen. Dr. Good. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, Sister Henderson just said it all. I mean, God is seed. I mean, when you have confidence in the Lord and he gives you the spiritual vision and he gives you the dream, you know that we are really just passenger on this earth and Our goal, you say, is to live a repentant lifestyle. When we mess up, we ask for forgiveness, and we get back in line, and we um, share the gospel with people, but we don't force it on them. But that is what we're called to do, to have faith and hope and love in the Lord. And then when we have that, I mean, we're going to sometimes be uh, way away from circumstances. Your family could be job. It could be food. It could be, you know, you have a lack of, but one thing I can really contest or testify that he would never leave us nor forsaken us. He is always there. He is so amazing. We have a God who knows us better than we know ourselves. So there are times when we do fall short. There are times when we do mess up. 
we can get back in line just by repentance and asking God with a sincere heart for forgiveness. And we must show that grace and mercy to others, even those who defile us. And I'm trying to teach my girls the art of forgiveness. No matter what that person has done, you still must forgive because God forgave us. It's a lifelong lesson. It's not easy to forgive, to forgive those who've done us wrong. So with that being said, this pandemic is teaching me a lot of patience <laughs> because this president is like on the golf course. We have Americans who are in a, in a, in days or minutes facing evictions and they have lack of, and we are in this United States of America. And it seems as if we are really um, a third world country now. It's like you see in, long lines of food, and we have the economics, we have the money, but because this president didn't get what he wants was when it comes to the presidency, he just really, you know how sometimes when you tease like a, uh, like for instance, a a fish with a worm, he's just teasing us or bait, um, giving us bait that we want, like money or things that we need, and then he's taking it away, and he's planted these games with the Senate, and that's what he's doing. He is really teasing the American people who are in need, and it's just crazy. So we have to pray for people like that because I'm just I'm just gonna be real. He says when you mess with my child, it's it's like saying go ahead and commit uh, suicide because uh, vengeance belongs to the Lord. So when you mess with a child of God, <laughs> so that's why I I pray for this man. I really do because he. He doesn't understand what he's doing to God's people. God's wrath is going to be far much more worse on him that than he's doing to us because it says in James, St. James, how can you um, treat someone who's rich better than who's poor? You're supposed to treat the CEO and the janitor the same. There is no preference. I mean, your money cannot make it to heaven. Your um, popularity, your education cannot make it to heaven. The only way that will uh, give you the ticket to heaven is knowing Jesus and loving on God's people. And he's not doing e- any of those things. So I just pray. I'm praying for him because the wrath of God, I don't want it on my enemy. And I consider him as an enemy because it's going to be very bad for him if he doesn't get on his knees and ask for forgiveness. And so that is what I you know, I continue on praying for, you know. One thing that Trump has done for me as a black person, I do pray more. So he can do some things for black people for me. I pray more. I, I think that a lot of people are now praying more than ever before because of everything they have seen, everything they have endured, of everything they have put up with. So I think a lot of people are praying more. And I think it's important to pray more, especially in times like these, because of the things that we are now encountering, the things that we're now seeing. Uh, so, so I guess the question is this now. What should be people's mindset going into 2021? Let's, I want to park right there. What should be the mindset? Because, mm. you know, this is the time that people start. Uh, res- New Year's resolutions and everything. But what should be the real mindset of people going into 2021? Let's talk about that. Come on, talk to me. Well, as for me, uh, I'm going back to David. I'm, I'm asking God, create in me a clean heart, renew the right spirit, Father God. Give me the strength and the will to do your will and your and to live according to the the precepts and the commandments that you have given us, that is my only. <laughs> I'm just going, I'm keeping you 100. I mean, of course, you know, we're going to do the standard. Yeah, I want to lose weight, stay in shape. But really, if I don't have God in my life, I can do all those things and not be kept. And I can not go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I want someone who can keep my mind, someone who can keep my spirit, man, someone who can keep me from myself. I mean, because sometimes we could get in our way. So I just want God to keep me, keep on keeping me, uh, because everything else is falling into their perspective places, such as 
God, family, and other things because those are my three orders. God comes first, then family, and then everything else. But family to me is not always biological. It's also my spiritual family, my relation family, my friendly family, everybody who I consider family. So really, I just want to continue on loving and allowing God to talk to me, giving me the directions that I need because without him as my compass, and as my anchor, I am nothing. So I can't do anything without him. <laughs> I mean, he can just snap his finger, and we all can be dead. I mean, that's the power that we have, that God has. And he has given us some power, but he has the almighty power. <laughs> so my, my, um, my coming into 2021 is to continue on walking with God. Hmm. Amen. Okay, come on, Elder Amen. Henderson. Amen. When you had asked oh, that question, yeah. I thought it was a song they used to sing in church, and then they used to say, I'm going to trust in the Lord until I die. And, you know, that's what comes to my mind, trust in the Lord. You know, with all your heart, not to your own understanding, you know, just trust him and to keep him first and to seek after him and, uh, and to keep faith in God because God has called us as believers to believe him. We, we have a responsibility to believe him and not throw away our confidence in him, no matter what it looks like, no matter what comes, to trust the Lord. He is a solid rock, you know. And, and I think that you were talking about that scripture, you know, about uh, you know, the fiery trial. All those things come to the cause you to be strong, the cause you to endure, to find out who you really are and where your faith really lies in God when tests and trials come. So what they do, even though it may be hardships, it may be disappointments, but what they all come to do is to build us up in our faith and cause us to have a greater hope, a greater tenacity, a greater faith in our God. And so uh, that's, that's what we hold on to, in our hope and our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And all those that put their trust in him, they will let us know, will never be made ashamed. And after done all this thing, keep standing on the word of God, because the word lets us know that everything that will be shaken will be shaken, but not one jot or two of his word will pass away. So when we stand on the word of God, we have a sure foundation that can never and will never be moved. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think that this is something that people really need to consider. I think they need to have the right mindset as they prepare to go into 2021 because if they don't, I think they're going to be disappointed uh, because they will have expected something that did not manifest, that did not go the way they were hoping, and then they're going to sit there and say, well, I thought and I figured or something. No, I think they have to have a certain type of mindset, and I think that's what we need to do. We need to help people to have the right mindset for this this coming year, not to uh, continue thinking about what has been, what they have endured, what they have been through. No, but have the mindset that uh, things are going to be what they're going to be. But I've got to I've got to keep my mind and my focus on the Lord, on His will on what he's going to do and not what I'm hoping and or anticipating. I think that's important that people understand that. Amen. Because if we do not uh, focus on what God has in store, we may find ourselves disappointed all over again. And I'll be honest, I just don't want to go into 2021 being disappointed all over again. I think it's important to know that God is in complete control. Not to mention, the Bible makes this clear, according to 1 John 5 and 4, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even your faith. And I believe that we have to go into 2021 with a faith that says it's going to be better than last year. You got to go into 2021 with a faith that says that things are not going to remain the same. Where faith, because let me tell you something I discovered about faith. Faith requires a lot of affirmation. Let me say it again. Faith requires a lot of affirmation. Why? Because affirmation strengthens your faith. I believe over in Jude, I believe about verse 19, it says, But ye beloved brethren, 
uh, maybe verse 20 says, building up your most holy faith, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I, I believe this is, again, a sign that faith needs affirmation. It needs to be strengthened. It needs to be fortified so that people can, in fact, deal with challenges that we not only face, but the challenges that shall come on top of what we are facing. Would you agree with that? Yes, I do agree with that. I, I totally agree that faith does require affirmation. And when you said that, I thought about the scriptures that the power, uh, uh, you know, of uh, life and death is in the in the power is in our mouth. The things that we say, and and so it's important to confess our faith and to declare the word of God. Uh, as also when you're talking, I'm thinking about discipline. We, we have to discipline ourselves uh, in his word or position ourselves in his word so that our mind, our motives, our will, all of that becomes discipline going into this year. Like you said, some people going in and then they say, oh, well, it's going to be a better year. And then they hear something on the news and then their faith gets taken all like it's just going to be another year and they get disappointed. But you don't put your confidence in what's going on in the world because we're just as believers we're children walking through this world. This is not our home, but for unbelievers too, to recognize that God is in is totally in control. And when they put their hope in him and they discipline themselves in him, and how do I mean that? I mean spend time in his presence. You know, pray, get up and and, and say what he's saying about those affirmations. You know, get a scripture, read that word. You know, if it's just one scripture, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, uh, Lord, lead and guide me. Whatever it is, make yourself, um, bring yourself into the presence of God so that through your day, you're holding on to something more than just what you're hearing on the news. So when you hear something that's disappointing or when something doesn't happen the way that you think, you have that word resonating in your spirit and your mind that lifts you up, as you were saying, building up yourself in the Holy Ghost, building up yourself in the Word of God. And that's so much needed. Because after looking up to the news after about 30 minutes, you know, your spirit can be shaken. Your mind can be shaken if you watch that news long enough. But, see, our hope is not in what's going on in the world. Our hope is in God. And so if you got to have something else down on the inside of you outside of what you're hearing. You've got to have that word. And so you've got to spend time with God going into 2021. And God will keep his people. And he will keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stayed on him. Wow. Come on, Dr. Kimmy. Talk to us. Talk to us. I mean, Benjamin Henderson said it all. I mean, <laughs> there's power in your tongue. There is power in, I mean, <laughs> she said it all. She gave you the grand finale. I mean, there's power in speech. There's power in the things that you're doing. There, there is power how you treat others. Um, I really believe that you know, when you come into the mindset of 2021, you must continue on focusing on the Lord because at the end of the day, it says at the, uh, at, at the name of Jesus, all tongue will confess, all knees will bow and give Jesus all of his praises voluntarily or involuntarily. You will have a choice but to praise the Lord because he will reign when he comes back. So with that being said, the Bible is, Speaking and it is producing the the um the pro- the prophecies you see in chaos you see in you know families torn apart you see in parents and the children you know getting along you see in so many destructions like family and the standards of living and TV and things that you put into your mind and your heart eventually does come out so that's why it it says in the word to think on these things things are pure and good and wholesome. He knew that if you keep your mind, stay on him, and you regulate in the word, that you can still stand like that tree as it is proclaimed in Psalms 1, no matter what, because you're going to be tossing and torn. I mean, you're going to be really just shooting. I mean, okay, that's why it says in Ephesians, to put on the whole armor of God. Because we are in a battle every day, every second. If it's not with ourselves, it's with other people. And so how we react or how we uh, respond to the situation depends 
It, it says something about who you are as a person. And so when we focus on things that are pure and kind and be respectful and generous and kind and loving to others, it demonstrates who your daddy really are. You only have two options. Either you're the father of God or you're father, the father of Satan. You only have two options. There's no in between. In the word, it says uh, either you're going to be hot or cold, not in between. Lukewarm makes you sick. So you cannot be lukewarm in coming in 2021. It's either God or mama. Is money your God or is God your God? Is your TV God or is God your God? Is your job or your children your, your God or is it God? It's whoever you put first. Who is your first love? So I declare that my first love is God because without him, I can't make it. Without him, Kimmy Kim could come back at any time because I have not arrived. I'm like Paul. <laughs> I'm still pressing. I don't care what no one said. You could be on this walk for 20 years and still have had issues. If you have arrived, thank you, Jesus, <laughs> or baby Jesus. I have not arrived. I am still learning myself. So with that being said, I continue to strive for greatness. And as I continue to strive on greatness, you're going to be tar- torn, and you're going to be tossed, and you're going to be torn. And so my main purpose is to continue on, you know, striving for greatness in the Lord in 2021. Mm. I, I want to I also be this thought, um, and, and you take it how you take it, but I, I think that here's something that somebody needs to hear, and that is this. As bad as things may seem right now, you're going into 2021. I want to tell you, don't throw in the towel too soon. You, you come too far, and you cover a real tragedy to throw in the towel. And I and and let me let me let me let me add this to it, because throwing the towel, based upon what we're seeing and what's going on, to throw in the towel really serves as a notification to others uh, that you threw in the towel too soon. You never want to let the enemy know that the enemy is getting the best of you. Uh oh. You never want the enemy to think that he's got the other hand. Ever. Not when the Bible makes it clear that whatsoever is born of God is overcomes the world. And so regardless of what it may seem like and what it may look like and what it may feel like right now, you cannot throw in the towel. Not right now. Another reason, because not only is it a notification for some, it serves as information to others. Because they're sitting out there uh, waiting to see if what you did was what they were thinking. Or, better yet, if you throw in the towel, somebody is waiting to say, I knew you were going to throw it in. I knew you wasn't going to make it. Let me tell you something, and this, this goes right back to the beginning. There is a winner in you. You are a winner. And I'm telling you, as you're getting ready to go into 2021, I want you to know you heard it on The Voice. You are a winner. I don't care how many times you have failed. I don't care how many times you have messed up. I don't care how many times things didn't go right. You are still not a failure. You are yet a winner. Why? Bible says a just man falls seven times and still gets up. The fact that you're getting up, and you're moving forward, you're not letting what has happened stop you, says you are a winner. You can't afford to throw in the towel too soon. Why? Because you don't need that notification. You don't need that information. And certainly, you don't need that to be your expectation. Uh Uh-uh. No. Don't think to yourself that you can't make it. Don't think to yourself you can't get through this. Don't think to yourself you can't survive. Don't think to yourself that you can't prevail because the truth of the matter is you can. How do I know? Because you're born of God. I'm talking to you who are listening, sir, ma'am, husband, wife, son, daughter, aunt, uncle, grandparent, 
whoever you are, CEO, CFO, COO of the other OOO, whatever the case is, you are a winner. Don't throw in the towel because of what it looks like. 2020 may not have been the best year thus far, but guess what? It's a guarantee that 2021 is going to be much better. Come on, what do you all think on that wise? Talk to me. Amen. I totally agree with that. Amen. Now, we are winners in Christ Jesus. And because of what Jesus did on the cross, he got the victory. And that victory was given to us. So we have victory in him. And just to say on tonight, just to tell someone tonight that may be listening, wait on the Lord and, and be of good courage. Wait and say on the Lord. But he that will come shall come. Yes, we've been through a turbulent time in, in 2020. But the best is yet to come. And to say, don't throw away your confidence, as you were saying, Apostle, that don't throw it away because there's a great reward when you hold on to your confidence. So when it goes through and you're going through and it seems a little shaky and things begin to happen that you didn't expect, just hold on to your faith. Hold on to your confidence because God is with you and God has already given you the victory. So I thank and I praise God for what he's already done. So we have to hold on to that, and we have to believe that, that the best is yet to come, and that God is working a, a more excellent reward on the inside of us. Just stay focused on him. Keep him first. Seek him. Test him. For there's a winner on the inside. There's a compliment on the inside of us, as you have said. And so God's people always win. So you seek with the Lord. Hold fast to him. Hold fast to his word. Hold fast to his promise. And keep him first, you know, you will make it through to the promise that God has in your life. Mm. Come on, Dr. Jimmy. Mm. Amen. I I say the same. Mm-hmm. I mean, building your solid rock on God's foundation is, is a privilege. It really is. Because... It tells me no matter what I'm facing, everything would be all right. I mean, we're going to be facing so many trials and tribulations as we walk through this earth. And I still reminded that even Jesus, or it's the time God, man, he asked his father if he could pass his cup because, you know, he was feeling the heavy pressure of, of the world. But this is amazing to me. God and man, he felt the weight of the world on his shoulders. So that tells me if Jesus, who is God, man, felt the the, the weight on, of the world, what makes us think we're not confused? And we're not even God, man. We are just man. <laughs> so it tells me that we are called, um, we were born into in, in iniquity, even though we are born again, but we still have problems with our salvation. But I am still reminded I want to have problems with God instead of having problems without God. Because with God, all things are possible. Without God, I have no faith. I don't know. I have to maybe lean towards a habit or drinking or smoking or going out or having sex with anybody. That Those things become my God. But when I have a God of the universe who is the creator of mankind and animals and the earth and everything that we see belongs to him, and I am he calls me, and he knows my name. That is so amazing to me. So that is what keeps me mm. every day. My God, my God. You know, I, I'm, I'm sitting here, and like I said, I've got a bunch of uh, notes and things that I've taken over a period of time. And sometimes some things just become so fitting. While we're talking about this winner that's in us and how to face this 2021 at, that we're getting ready to walk into, Here's something that I came across I think that you might find quite interesting. It says, the enemy desires to sift you as wheat so he can take you out, but you are in God's hand, dwelling in the secret place, being in his will, having been raised and made to sit in heavenly places in Christ, washed in the blood while living in his presence. Therefore, the only way the enemy can take you out is by you coming out of the ark of safety. I believe if you stay in 
place with the Lord. There is nothing that the enemy can do to you to harm you. I want you to hear me. You're going to make it not only through the remainder of this year, which is just a, about maybe 48 and a half hours remaining, but I, I want you to know you're going to make it through this pandemic. You're going to make it into 2021 and far beyond. If you're serving God, God is going to look out for you. If you're doing what he has required you to do or what he has assigned you to do, he's going to look out for you. That is why you're still here. Not because you've been so good. Not because you've done the right thing. Not because you've always said the right thing, but because God has a plan for you. Stop thinking you've earned the right to be here. Stop thinking you deserve the right to be here. No, you're only here because God chose you to be here. God said, I have something for you to do. I don't care if your name is Albert or Ava. God has something for you to do, whether your name is Butch or Bonquisha. God has something for you to do, whether you're Xavier or you are Excalibur. God has something for you to do. That's why you're still here. That's what I need you to understand. My friend, my brother, my sister, you are a winner. And though you felt like you might have lost some things this year, please know that 2021 will be a year that you will gain. It will be a year that you will experience the better. It wasn't the best that life had to offer. But you can be certain that better days are ahead. I want to take your final closing statements tonight, and we're going to get out of here uh, for tonight from the voice. Come on, let's give some final thoughts, final statements tonight. Well, my sign to say is without a test, we don't have a testimony. So let your 2020 be the testimony for 2021. So whatever we have gone through, share your testimony with others so we can continue on building the kingdom because we are kingdom builders. That is what we do. Amen. It's what we do. I like that. Talk to Amen. me. Amen. I'm going to take the words that I hear Bishop Jefferson say, and that is, without God, we cannot. And without him, we will not. And so together with God, we can do all things, and without him, we can't do anything. And just remember that the trouble and the victory and the promise is all connected. So when you think about victory, don't think of an absence of the trouble, because trouble just comes to bring forth the victory. So oftentimes those two are tied together. But as we keep our hand in the hand of the Lord, God will bring us through the trouble into our victory and into our promise in Jesus' name. Amen. In the words of Apostle Vincent Smith, he would say, if you're going, if you're catching hell, don't hold it. If you're going through hell, don't stop. So go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. God's got something greater waiting for you. This has been Apostle Whitlow filling in tonight for Apostle Vincent L. Smith on The Voice. We want to wish you a wonderful, prosperous new year and want you to be in expectation that you're going into a year to win because you are born of God. Listen, I'm going to tell you, go with God, and he will, and he will go with you. The Lord bless you. Have a great night. And tune in to The Voice next Tuesday night in the new year on Elation Radio at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9.30 Central. The Lord bless you. Have a prayer. Good night. Shalom. Again, have a happy new year. Kimmy Kim, hit it. Let us
must not be ashamed to ask the good Lord to walk with us. In every situation, whatever you may be going through, don't be ashamed to ask the good Lord to walk with you. Mm-hmm. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Going in for this 